Would you eat worms to be more sustainable? If it's packed like a burger, hell yeah. And welcome to the podcast series, Making the Most of It. The title of the series basically says it all. This past year has been extremely challenging and tough for most of us. But within five episodes, we are going to talk about five areas of life in which you can make the most of it. Socializing and making friends, love and dating, living in Groningen, sustainability and climate change, and of course, planning your future. In these five episodes, we are going to share interesting stories by very interesting people, We're going to give you some advices and share some tips on how we can make the most of it, even in such times of complete uncertainty. My name is Lara. I am from Austria and I'm currently living in Groningen and I'm doing my master's in international communication at Hanse. Today, we're talking about sustainability and climate change, which is a very interesting and urgent topic. Um, in March 2021, a study in the US actually revealed that 83% of Generation Z is often experiencing echo anxiety. So feeling deeply concerned, but feeling helpless about the health of the planet. So this is, of course, a very broad topic, but it's an important one. And we are going to talk about problems we face regarding sustainability and climate change and some contradicting opinions, as well as some solutions for the future. Um, personally, I'm not an expert on this topic, but I'm very happy that we have one expert here who is called Joop, and we also have an international living in Groningen, Alfred. Alfred, would you like to start introducing yourself? Uh, sure. Do I introduce myself to just both of you? Sure. Okay. Hi, I'm Alfred. I am an international here. I've lived here for five, six years. Um, I'm currently studying computational and cognitive science. Um, mm -hmm. But I first began with psychology and then I sort of just continued. Mm. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I guess that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Yeah, so my name is Joop. I'm 29. I'm born and raised here in Groningen. I've seen uh, many places in the world and I'm back here to yeah, make something out of, um, out of this planet. Um, Rewild this planet. Nice. And... Um, Yeah, so I work with companies to become more sustainable. Uh, and I'm happy to be here to talk about this topic because, uh, yeah. like you said, eco-anxiety, it's a big thing. And um, it's good for people to have some things they can think about and, and, and interact about to, yeah. to see how they can resolve this. Tell us a bit more about what you do in your work and how you got there. Mm -hmm. So I did a master's in entrepreneurship and innovation. And there, like this entrepreneurial mindset has always been... Uh, within me and I got it from my parents I think they are both mm. uh, uh, freelancers and um, uh, I realized in this study that all this plant-based food thing I was doing that it was also good for the planet right so mm. then I thought what else can I do for the planet um, so I started to live more sustainably mm. and um, then you have like your footprint um, which became quite uh, I became quite fine with my footprint right um, but then I thought, what else can I do? And mm. then you talk about your handprint, uh, which is oh. what we call within this um, company I'm work working for as well as a climate coach. Mm -hmm. We talk about footprints and handprints. And handprint is when you, what can you do for the world? What can you do with your reach mm. that helps other people to become more sustainable? Mm. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Yeah. So this I use with companies to, yeah. to see how they can make their strategy more sustainably, their business model, um, their communications. So I helped them in this whole process. Nice, that's cool. That is really awesome, yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about your, well, let's say, what's your involvement with the topic or how was your interest or How have I tried to be sustainable? Connection? Oh, God. Um, 
Well, I suppose the first thing that I kind of have to say or apologize for is that I'm kind of terrible with water. <laughs> oh, do you uh, like long showers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's just nothing. They're lovely. They're amazing and they make you feel really, really safe. But at the same time, there's always a, a guilt, I guess, because mm. uh, they make you feel comfortable. But at the same time, it is water. Mm. Um, exactly. So I, uh, the, the best way I could have really mitigated it was either not use hot water just because I hate cold showers. Mm. Um, or just have the will power to stop myself, and that's non-existent, really. Um, that being said, um, I am at least a little bit more aware of the food side of sustainability. I'm not the biggest fan of the meat industry, just mm -hmm. not necessarily because. Well, I have my certain gripes with the, let's say, the animal morality of it all. But I have my biggest gripe with the amount of land that it's taking just to be able to, mm -hmm. let's say grow the agriculture yeah um with the same amount of land we could grow a, a a fuck ton of like grains or pulses or what have you and that'll feed a lot of people mm -hmm. but we're using it for meat and that's where i kind of have the biggest gripe with i suppose yeah mm. interesting mm. yeah i mean the topic is super big it ranges from causes of climate change to consequences of climate change like uh, extreme weather um, melting ice um, wildlife everything up until like solutions on an international scale mm, yeah. on a national scale individually by companies it's like such a broad topic yeah. what would you say is like um what I what are the biggest challenges in this topic for for Groningen for Groningen specifically yeah well the Netherlands is um uh, a country that is mostly under sea level right mm -hmm. so I think Groningen is just on the verge so we like they made these projections about the future, if the sea levels would rise to a certain height, we would actually have beach here, we would be at the beach side, which sounds quite nice, but then we lost <laughs> a lot of our beautiful Friesland and uh, other provinces. Yeah. Um, so specifically for Groningen, I think in the cities, it's heating up the inner cities, you know, it gets hot in the summer. And there this are, affects people's lives a lot. There are hot spots here, right? Like certain clusters of just like heat collecting just because of the way the buildings are insulated. Yeah, that could be true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about the details, but it's always with cities, right? Because of the buildings, they capture more heat and uh, there's not many trees around. No. Even if you have one tree in your garden, you already have like uh, four degrees difference in the summer or something. Um, so, but for Groningen, you, you asked... Um, I think this is a thing with cities, right? The heat mm. um, and then climate adaptation. So um, they had this climate adaptation week in Groningen. Yeah, uh, in February. January. January. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Wow. And uh, they had a lot of events and you could actually do this tour through the city. And you, they, they told you about what happens uh, with climate adaptation and why it's so important. Yeah, I, I even saw like when I was cycling through the city, I saw those those stands and mm -hmm. those information posters. It was super interesting because a lot of people know about climate change and how to mitigate mm -hmm. climate change, but adaptation is another thing, right? Yeah. So adaptation is about how to um, how to deal with the change yeah. or with the consequences that are already there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's super interesting. I think it's important to raise awareness on this, right? Yeah. So you think that's one of the the main issues for Groningen, right? To yeah. adapt to the changes that are already here? Yeah, like it's both, right? You have to uh, try to stop climate change or yeah. at least mitigate slow down. It. And yeah. then also mitigate because it's changing anyhow. Yeah. So how as a city you should change. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, you've been living here for, for a few years now, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard talking about like adaptation as well? Or is this not such a big topic among the, among the youth, like your peers, your friends? Well, uh, interestingly enough, um, I'm part of a group who actually did perform for the Climate Adaptation Week. Oh, uh, so wow. I So I'm aware of climate adaptation and I've uh, dealt with certain projects with climate adaptation. And I suppose the first thing that I guess gets into my mind when I'm thinking about climate adaptation is we're already working under the assumption that we, we, we can prevent the climate from changing to a certain extent or even to much extent in the first place. And so what we're doing now is just really <laughs> adapting to these harsh, harsh changes, which I suppose in like the Netherlands, um, the rising sea levels, uh, there's only so much we can do. Maybe we can build more dams, but I have no idea what the sort of civil engineering would require for that. But mm -hmm. For other areas, it's going to be a little bit more of a hellhole. Um, mm -hmm. Constant mm -hmm. 
forest fires that's a terrible thing that how like the question i suppose is how if you already live in those areas and you don't want to move how the hell are you going to adapt to those sort of climates for i think here it's a little bit more doable i would yeah. say Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why I actually had trouble with your question just now, mm -hmm. because I'm mostly concerned about the planet as a whole, right? So when you ask me yeah. about Groningen, I feel like, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's bothering now too much. Maybe there's a lot of urgency yeah, here yeah. as well, but I don't feel it. Whilst when you see these wildfires and uh, people that live on the coast, like in Miami or whatever, and they have a lot of hurricanes and yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. then it's much more serious. That is true. I also think in other areas it's probably more urgent, but I think still, like, on an individual level, mm -hmm. the change needs to be there everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking Absolutely. on an individual level, because many people say, um, yeah, like, why should I change my own behavior as one person mm -hmm. if big companies like Amazon or others, like, just keep on destroying the planet? Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Like, does it really matter what I do as a person? Yeah. What do you feel like? I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> oh, share them. Uh, honestly, it's a, it is a good question. And I'm going to play devil's advocate in this position right now. Um, I think according to studies or according to uh, just, I suppose, no, just according to uh, studies or what I, at least I have found, the actual percentage of influence that uh, a single individual has, of course, is tiny, mitigated. But what we're really concerned about is for a whole population yeah. distribution. Suppose that they actually um, control the amount of water, they actually held it by the plastic, A, B, and C. They mm -hmm. actually managed to do this thing. Or a certain amount of individuals such that there was a significant effect. Mm. Even if there was such a significant effect, it would still be so minimal compared to the actual damage caused by the bigger companies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, and there, I think, lies in the problem of if that is so, if the real influence, the real change is going to be caused by the bigger companies, the ones who are going to be, let's say, the, the plastic companies, the ones that are basically killing the sea, the logging companies, the ones who don't necessarily care about the forests. Um, what can I as, as an individual do? Um, and there, I think it sort of feels a little bit hopeless. And that's mm -hmm. where I think a lot of the eco anxiety, eco exactly. depression can come from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think the real uh, issue or the real reason why we should still struggle for it as an individual is simply because these uh the 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 psychology behind it the actual will to fight for it is still important even if it is mm -hmm. kind of hopeless mm -hmm. yeah. because if we have that ability to actually fight for it then maybe at some point somebody who actually has the will who has the or the ability to actually do it uh will actually stand up against maybe these companies it might, it's very unlikely but on an individual level i think it just matters that we do something about it. Yeah, maybe even to just put pressure on those who really can change a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are yeah. your thoughts on this? Yeah, a lot of the things you're saying I agree with. And it's always easy to point to something else, to someone else, to yeah, anything for that matter, in relationships, yeah. in your work, if it's about the planet. Mm. Uh, and how does that make you feel, pointing to someone else? Does it make you feel empowered? Does that make you feel like you're in charge of anything? Mostly not. Like mm -hmm. you're just yeah, getting more worried mm -hmm. and not feeling that you can do much. Whilst yeah. uh, when you put that to the side and just look at your own influence, your own life, you have, like I just explained as well, you have like your handprint and your footprint, right? Your handprint is, your footprint is something that is clearly because of your uh, actions. Mm -hmm. So what you buy, how you eat, how you live, how you travel. Um, and this is all from these companies that we have troubles with as well. So you make a statement there. And then when it's about your handprint, uh, your water rimple effect, uh, so to say. Your, like your the, what? That's it, the, the straight translation from Dutch. Okay. But uh, you know the water, when you put in a stone, it, the, the, it wrinkles, right? The water to okay. the side, like yeah, the yeah, circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It reaches very, very far. Mm. So wow. you as an individual doing one thing, for me, for example, it's my cashew fondue. It's my, uh, <laughs> my, my statement as Ooh. a chef planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. This is a thing I always cook with gro groups of people. <laughs> this is um, your main dish. This is my, my main dish. All right, when service, I wanna, service. Like when I want to advocate for plant-based eating. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. People get excited about it, right? Like, hey, this is actually a good alternative for cheese fondue, which is a mm. big thing here in the Netherlands. I, I think uh, in Austria as well. We love it too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of cashews, so I think you're already sold. And yeah, it's cashews really nice. are still, they have some impact as well, but it's more about the plant-based uh, 
kind of eating. And yeah. um, so just for those people that have these kind of thoughts, uh, think for yourself, like, do I want to just point to something else or do I actually want to see what I can do? It's a good point. And then what you said as well, just use your voting rights, the, the way you uh, maybe you do activism, you go onto the streets, whatever. Yeah. Just Definitely. look what you can do. Definitely. And talking about eco-anxiety and young people, we also asked the ESN Instagram audience mm -hmm. about their perspectives. Are they depressed? And, well, we're going to come to this. <laughs> But we have some pretty interesting insights. For example, we asked them what they actually do for, well, what is good for the planet, right? So yeah. we... We got a lot of a lot of insights. For example, concerning food, they eat like try to eat less meat, yeah. um, or to be like vegetarian or vegan, to, to grab uh, milk alternatives like not dairy milk, but mm -hmm. like for example oat milk or Oatly. almonds. Oatly is pretty good. I love Oatly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, regarding products, they try to use more sustainable products like soap or shampoo bars, mm -hmm. which I find super good. Um, or they try to shop secondhand or use their products or clothes really mm -hmm. until they break, right? Because sometimes you throw things away because you just don't like them as much anymore, right? Yeah. Mm. Some people also say they try to travel more sustainably. Mm -hmm. Public transport, biking, a big thing in the Netherlands. But yeah. in Austria, for example, not such a big thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of sad, I think. And then also plastic, right? So try to reuse bags they they try to go to the supermarket with their own bags mm -hmm. or go to places where they can actually get get the products that they want like rice or beans in their bags that they brought so i think that's a really good idea oh, like those shops that don't offer anything but they just have like the containers and you can refill it yourself exactly yeah, exactly yeah, 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 yeah. and there's actually a place here in Groningen. oh really yeah do you know le souk Mm -hmm. Le Souk, it's like yeah. this... Um, oh, the Moroccan uh, market. Is it, is it yeah, Arabian? Arabian? So, yes. Arabian? Okay. Arabian. You can get so. like rice, beans and oats and different things there when you bring your own things. Mm -hmm. And I also heard at Albert Hein you can, um, let, you can bring your bread bag, like yeah. a bag for your bread and ask them to put the bread in your bag instead of the plastic. Uh, so okay. I think those are some things that yeah. are definitely nice. It's a nice start. Yeah, and then the next question is like something I would like to ask you first. Me? Yeah, it's an okay. interesting one. Okay. Um, would you eat worms to be more sustainable? If it's packed like a burger, hell yeah. <laughs> If it's packed like a burger, what about you? I mean, it's not plant-based. Exactly. I can, I can <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I was at this true, conference Yeah, that's true, but it's one. still yeah. more sustainable. Yeah, if it's about sustainability, it's probably a good thing to do but uh, the reason I eat plant-based is mostly in, uh, initially for ethical standpoint and then you can think like yeah a worm what does that feel but uh, I found out that insects actually can have quite a bit of a sensitivity to anything right hey. like when I was young I actually had these worms and I would do horrible things like I would cut them in half or something you oh know? no yeah like you're a child that's so mean yeah but then or with the with the with the glass i don't know i don't know why i say this here I, no, no, <laughs> no, listen we all did it yeah every every everybody and who's we're not listening, proud of it yeah, yeah they're all listening like oh god i did it too yeah. yeah and you're representing that sin right now yeah exactly but now I, i feel yeah so the worms are my friends i would say <laughs> oh yeah. so you wouldn't want to eat them no well Actually, how much, how many, how, how much percentage of the people we asked said yes or no? What do you think? Who's who was like more? Were there more yeses or more nos? In what the, do you think? In the past, let's say 10, 20 years ago, I would definitely say roughly 80, 90 percent would say no. Now, I think it's a lot different. I think there'd be. Is there a clear uh, result? I have a clear percentage. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I thought it would be like a bit. Uh, 50 50 or something. But. No, it's actually 72% said they would not eat okay. worms. Well, I was thinking 23% would say yes. But. Yeah, 28 says yes. And I actually I, I, I did some research, and actually, recently on May 3rd, the European in Union they um, accepted meal worms. It's called yellow meal worms mm -hmm. as a, a thing you could eat here, right? That mm -hmm. can be sold. And they actually they have a lot of protein. So That's good. And they are susp sustainable. They have lower carbon emission and they require less feed and produce less waste. So yeah. that's that's a reason why they... Wait, so are you suggesting that there are actual like yellow mealworm farms? Do you farms? want to see a picture? Well, I mean, not like as a, but as a farm. Do you have a picture of a farm? No. Oh. Okay. I only have a picture of the Of, of the, the actual worms. worm. Yeah. Let me just see if I can find it. But I, there's a lot already some... some 
some recipes online on what there's even burgers mentioned, right? So there, you there were talking was about actually a few of these kind of products in the shelves in the Jumbo, I think. Yeah, a I remember. Years ago, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But they didn't. Uh, oh, well, they would not. Okay, they didn't sell good enough. But yeah. maybe it gets another run. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, but the thing is, they sold a b variety of different insects and like, yeah. what is it called? I think it was the, not the cockroaches, but the, I think it was the cockroaches. It, <laughs> uh, the, the grasshoppers. They tasted yeah. way too yeah. much like cardboard. Grasshoppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would be Never a picture of them. the... This would be a picture oh, yeah. of the worms. Wow, that doesn't look tasty. Appetizing. I mean, it's like you, spaghetti. I mean, you would not have to eat them like this, but you could like prepare mm. a meal with them, right? But well, I mean, this is still a question for the future if this is going to be something that's going to be... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be real, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, in the future, if we have no other choice, you know, adapt or die. Yeah. If this is the only option, well, I suppose we'll have to go for it. Or we'll actually learn to go full pan based. Because I still have, I'm still holding out my dream that we all, we basically have a variety of different foodstuffs and scientists like, uh, like gourmet engineers, I forgot what they're called, culinary engineers. Uh, they've made the Impossible Burger, for instance. That's mm -hmm. a purely mm. plant-based uh, thing where they've just made it taste like a meat, mm -hmm. but it's purely plant-based. But actually, th these worms, they are said to taste like peanuts. Okay. I mean, a peanut yeah. burger does sound all right. It does yeah. sound all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. So, and there's already recipes for finger foods, biscuits, pasta, burgers, and smoothies with those worms. So mm. maybe Wait. it's going to be the thing soon. Did you say smoothie? Yeah, I said smoothie. Well, if it's like if it's like nuts, and I mean it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. Like a peanut smoothie. Yeah. Uh. But well, talking about food, we also asked them um, what if they're meat eaters or vegan, or vegetarian, or flexitarian, or pescatarian. Yeah. And there were actually a lot of people saying that they were vegetarian or at least trying to mm -hmm. eat less meat. What I do also is I I don't ever buy meat mm -hmm. from to make or to eat myself at home. But when I do go out to eat, I sometimes eat meat. Or also when I travel or when I traveled. Um, and when there was like some kind of national dish, right? I, and that involved meat, I would also try it like once. Because mm -hmm. I just wanted to know. What, what are your... Um, well, I would ask you a question. Why is it that you don't buy it to cook? But then when you go out for dinner, it's different? What is the difference for you? I don't know. It's just that I just in general try mm -hmm. to eat less. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tell myself I should not buy any. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I just, well, I, I say to myself, okay, you can have Crave meat it. once, but at least don't, don't buy it from the supermarket or, mm -hmm. yeah. Because this is no a, apparently a very common thing yeah. uh, for flexitarians to yeah. go out for dinner and then they do eat meat or yeah, any exactly. other animal products. Yeah. But um, therefore I'm quite interested about, the, curious about the results, like how much consumption we had last year because of the restaurants being mm -hmm. closed um, a lot of the times yeah. uh, because meat consumption has still gone up the years before and that's quite confusing for yeah, me sometimes personally I, I really ate the least meat ever in this past year I think yeah definitely I hear many people saying that yeah what about you yeah uh, I have not eaten meat for the last three or four years but um mm. Uh, yeah, I've seen it a lot around me now too. So on the one hand, I have more people around me that are maybe doing the same kind of stuff, but same time I have all my old friends and they say it's very normal now to eat like uh, three times a week vegetarian, you know? When I went vegan three, four years ago, for me it was so unusual to not have meat in my meals. Yeah, but so I think there's, there's, there's like this trend, right? Yeah. Of going like with less meat. Yeah. What about you? What about me? What oh. is your... So what is I'm, your stance on this? I'm, st I'm still technically, uh, I'm still technically an omnivore. I still eat meat. Um, I'm still practicing. So I'm very similar to you, where I uh, buy vegetarian, mm. but when I'm ordering, then I will buy meat. And I think, um, if I were to answer your question when you asked what is the difference, I think the difference really is out of habit, mm -hmm. um, yeah. because I haven't practiced what would taste nice that doesn't have meat because mm -hmm. I think there is a certain I, I grew up with meat and I'm, it's very difficult to just immediately cut it out and when there are days let's say in order for me to continue to practice plant, a plant-based diet or a vegetarian diet I would have to think about it mm -hmm. that requires a lot of focus and I think yeah. uh, when I just don't care uh, when I just don't want to think, then the easiest thing to do would be to fall back on habit. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to have a burger, I'm going to have a chicken wing yeah. just because I don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's 
uh, one of the biggest obstacles we're going to face as a on an individ- individual level when we have let's say values that more more akin to uh, veganism or vegetarianism but out of habit are more towards meat eating mm-hmm. um, yeah. it's still for me at least uh, a process that's the whole thing about behavioral change mm-hmm. Um, there's always, with every behavioral change, there's some kind of cost, right? So either it's money or it's effort, it's time, it's like um, convenience Mm -hmm. convenience. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely true, definitely. But what about, like, there's so many... I've also tried um, new stuff, for example, um, meat alternatives. Mm -hmm. I've tried to cook with those. They're amazing. Hmm? I love them so much. Yeah, they're good. They can be good. They can be good, definitely. But then I've been asking myself, where... Where's the fish alternatives? They exist. Mm-hmm. They're not bad. Have you ever tried a fish alternative? They're, I mean, like they taste like fish, but they're exactly yeah. They exist in Alberheim as well. Wow. Like fish sticks, uh, like <laughs> fish sticks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's also yeah. like salmon tasting ones, which are okay. All right. The, the 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 thing about those is that they they taste a little bit. Pardon my French. It's fishy. They taste okay. fishy. Mm-hmm. Fishier than fish? No, 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 no. Weird fish, as in oh. like, um, fish. yeah, because like, uh, good fish. There's a certain taste of like the sea, but this doesn't taste like the sea. It just tastes like the the weird kind of fish, mm. um, and it's all right. Okay. And a lot of the actual good taste sort of comes more from the breadcrumbs, and that's not what you want to get. Yeah, no. But yeah. I really have to try this because I've not seen it yet. I think they at least I buy I bought it from Albert Hein. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you tried those yet? Yeah, so the other day, uh, Albert Hein expanded their their, uh, their portfolio of plant-based yeah. options like twice, great. times two yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of budget options too. So fish sticks, frikandel, yeah. like mm. all the traditional snack eating stuff. The cool thing is I they're think good. it's a lot cheaper than the actual meat. Or they're yeah. about the same size. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. These, these from the home brand, they are cheap. So yeah. they're yeah. nice to try. And they're nice as a, as a party snack, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, talking about money, we also asked um, whether people think being sustainable is a luxury. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. and opinions are quite divided, you know, because mm. 55 people said yes, it's a luxury, and mm. 45 people said no. You oh. as an expert, what, what do you think? Um, for me, this is uh, quite obviously uh, an investment, actually. So I save a mm-hmm. lot of money since I've in living more sustainably. So I don't buy new clothes too much. I don't buy new stuff. I always measure, like I always weigh if I really need it or not. Mm-hmm. And so my savings have never been higher than now, wow. which is which is great. And then the only thing I pay more money for is uh, when I really want some product that is well ethically well made and also organically certified or anything like this. So I pay like maybe three times the price sometimes or two times. But for yeah. all the other things I don't buy, it, it weighs up. And then with food, um, this is where I don't have any limits because I think it's so important to eat healthy stuff. So I try to eat organically as much as I can. And it's an investment in my own health as well, right? So you can Definitely. see it as a, as a cost, but yeah, what is more worth than your own body? It's a long-term benefit for yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think uh, food can be more expensive. Other things don't have to be. That's a short answer I think for me. that's also the misconception about yeah. it. Because, of course, yeah, meat alternatives, they can be expensive. But then you have to think about what you save by not buying too many clothes a year or mm-hmm. by buying secondhand. Because that's, that's areas where you can actually mm-hmm. save, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's super interesting. And the last question... Can we just quickly... Are we running out of time? Uh, no, no. Okay, I don't know. Just, just to go back on mm-hmm. that, because I'm uh, uh, on. For the, f- I'm curious to know if there is a correlation between um, the people who answered either uh, it is expensive or it is a luxury, and what uh, and their socioeconomic status or their previous ones, whether uh, yeah. they were born in a more luxurious country or not, and whether this question shouldn't necessarily be asked on a specific population like us, because. Yes, we are an international group uh, or an international population with a wide variety of backgrounds, but 
if we're going to be living in the Netherlands, there's a great amount of alternatives that are either equally as cheap, maybe a little bit more expensive, but also maybe even cheaper. Because yeah. in my opinion, uh, eating vegetarian is actually a lot cheaper than actually eating meat. I agree, yeah. But my curiosity uh, that I kind of want to toss to you, that's mm -hmm. all right, is um, if this luxury is rather should not be asked on a individual level, but more on a population, more on a national level. So, for instance, the Netherlands is more of a richer country, a, a mm -hmm. highly... Uh, socioeconomic status kind of country and so maybe they have the capacity to invest in this more greener uh, uh, businesses but what about other countries that uh, can't for instance well the lesser developed countries are often way more sustainable than we are is that right so they're probably doing a good job anyway yeah yeah um, why is that why is that yeah they don't consume that much mm. they don't have the money for it but they yeah. also don't have this lifestyle that we have. They don't travel all over the country. And, some people, yeah. for us, it's normal to fly anywhere, right? But for some people, like maybe, now I'm just tossing something in there, but I think like 30, 40% of people have never flo uh, flown. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, the lifestyle is very different. So Actually, I think, uh, yeah. it's only about 5% of the entire population on this world who have ever stepped in an airplane. Okay, 5%. that's, that's Wait, even really? Less. Oh, man. I also didn't know, but I read it online and I was shocked. Yeah. yeah. So this is Sorry a big thing, right? No, that's <laughs> yeah. perfect. Because yeah. I said a very different percentage. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so I think we should focus mostly on ourselves. And of course, we can see because they are now going to be expanding in their welfare, right? So yeah, yeah. if we can somehow see how we can help them uh, change their behaviors, not towards what we did, but more towards a more sustainable way they're living already. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I suppose what 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 I'm sort of hoping for is I think a lot of the um, actual influence on the sustainability of the climate is born from uh, certain products, like products that are just shipping out plastic, for instance. Um, and if we I don't know transition from plastic free, then these businesses are gonna either run out of money or transition to something that is a little bit more green. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I don't know. In my opinion, I think the future is really on uh, creating or showing these uh, businesses that are effectively green just by norm. And I suppose that's the kind of innovation I think we need. But yeah. I have no idea how to think up of that. Yeah, it's. It's complex because for a change on a big scale to happen, some industri industries will have to change. Mm -hmm. Think about the meat industry. Yeah. If, if, if this continues um, to, to become like more vegetarian, then those, industry might have to, those industries might have to adapt, adapt to that and also yeah. like try to shift their products a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, like, this is complex on, on a big scale, right? Yeah. But many are already are doing that. So... Um, big meat uh, companies are also investing in this mm. space because they see what's happening, right? Um, as with any business, you have to move with the with, with the, the times, and, exactly uh, with the trends. Yes, if exactly. If you don't, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna yeah. I think I, I'm very oh. I'm very curious about how the world will look like in like 20, 30 years. We're gonna be living on ships. But talking about some some more of the controversies or our mm -hmm. differing opinions on on climate change. Some people say, okay, yeah, climate change is not human caused because, well, the planets. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Go he's for ready it. for an answer. No, 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 he is. But he I'm is also. also. Okay, no, no, well, no, no. Oh. some people say, okay, and uh, we've only been measuring uh, temperatures for like 100 years, specifically, I think, since 1890 or around 18, 1890. Um, so they are saying, yeah, but what's, how did the ice age happen? Maybe the planet is just getting warmer. But then, most like the majority of climate scientists say yeah but this this change in climate is from the gases that we put mm. in the atmosphere mm. maybe you as an expert can say something about it well i'm not more of an expert than these scientists and no, i think they're right not. so yeah um yes uh, changing of climate is a very natural phenomena and therefore we have changing times uh, but that's over millions of years right yes the change that we've seen now over 50 years is uh yeah it's insane so it's mm. clearly and they have a point that it's towards our behavior, the gases we put in there. Uh, and I think it's our responsibility as well to do something about it. You also wanted to say something about this? No, I, I just wanted to say, like, uh, the look was more of a, like, a, a god to those who don't believe in this sort of science. Just because yeah. um, 
the, uh, the the sort of changes are definitely on a, a, a let's say a non-made natural thing. That's the sort of cycles that mm-hmm. say from the ice age to the warmer age and back and forth. But you're completely right. Um, the sort of changes that we've been noticing from human-made or man-made uh, influences are uh, cause the change in our climate. It's way too fast. It's way too. You can definitely see uh, where there are like seasonal cycles, but on an overall trend, it's just shooting straight up, and mm-hmm. that's definitely um, from all the things that we're just shooting up in the air, and mm-hmm. it's terrible. Yeah. So. ESN's followers on Instagram agree with you. Oh, so they God. say, oh, wow. yeah, thank God. <laughs> 96% say it is human costs, All but right. still 4% say it's it's not. Who are these? 4%. 4%. Yeah. So. That's okay. If yeah. they can stay in the closet, they're fine. <laughs> Let's... Okay, now we've talked about like all, all the problems we're facing, all the, the attitudes of young people, how they feel like, what the mm-hmm. challenges are, right? Mm-hmm. What are like some, some solutions that come to your mind? We've been talking about like Le Souk, where you can, yeah. for example, shop more sustainably. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, there's mm-hmm. also, for example, Mama Mini in, in yep. Groningen, the, the second hand shop. Story. I yeah. love Do it. you have like first students who mostly, well, most of them probably don't have as much money, yeah. which are like some ways in which they can become more sustainable in Groningen. Yeah. Give me tips, please. Yes, give us tips. Yeah, of course. Um, the things I do, let's, let's uh, go from that standpoint. What I try to do, um, go to the market. So it's an experience. You go there and you buy your fresh veggies and, and fruits and, and whatever, nuts or whatever you like. And um, you bring your own bags, you bring your own stuff, yes. you, you have some interaction with the people, it's outside, it's, it's, an, it's actually a nice thing to do. Mm. And then if you want to make some savings, you just go at the end of the day and you get like uh, everything for only one euro, you know, like 10 bananas for 50 cents. Really? Like, they, they reduce the prices? They have the a prices? lot of reduction because they want to oh, get rid of their I daily... I did not know. Daily it's a lot know? cheaper oh. than the supermarket. It's insanely cheap. I, 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 had a, I had a friend who was telling me about, like he got like a kilogram of onions. He got, I think like a, a, a ton of fruits and vegetables. Like what we usually cost, like I think maybe 15 euros mm-hmm. at best in Albert Hein and he got it for five euros. No I was way. gobsmacked. I mean, yeah. I love going to the market, but I usually don't go like close to the closing hour, yeah. right? But I'm, I, I might try it out. This is an, exp- this is an expert tip right here. <laughs> cool. And otherwise, you know the guy, uh, the the app, Too Good To Go? Yes, yeah. I do. Try yeah. this? Or? Yeah, my roommates and I, we try to use it, but you have to be fast, right? Yeah. To get like the, the, the magic boxes of the best places. Mm-hmm. What is this? It's uh, an app. You can explain it as well. I think you have experienced it. I've never actually used it. I know yeah. it's there. But yeah, so it's, a, it's an app. And it shows you some, well, it's for reducing the waste from like mm-hmm. supermarkets or bakeries mm. or such things, right? Because at the end of the day, if they cannot sell it, they might throw it away because they are, they oh. don't, they have to, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you can go to, to good to go download the app, which is for free. Okay. And you can, at a specific time of the day, you can like purchase one box, which is, I think, five euros a mm. box or so, and you get all kinds of different things in there. And it's often, like, valued at 10 or 15 euros or yeah, something, right? Yeah, it's, like, super cheap, and you get some things. It's kind of a surprise, right? So you get some... <laughs> you might get some things you don't like, but you might yeah. get super great stuff. And, yeah, yeah, for yeah. example, the other day, we, we did it for a bakery, my roommates and I, mm. and we got a lot of bread, and you just put it in the freezer, so... Mm-hmm. And it's super cheap as well. Yeah. Nice. And it reduces waste. Nice. Yeah, this is the kind of innovation that gives me hope. Right. Yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah. it's super nice. What is it called again? Too good to go. Too good to go. Yes, we're gonna put all different kinds of links. Okay. Anyway, all right, cool, cool, cool. Next to the podcast, so nice. that everybody can check it out. And uh, one other thing, if you went to zero waste, uh, you can go to zero waste Nederland They have uh, tours throughout the country on the fifth of June, uh, on a Saturday. I actually. I'm a guide at one of the tours here oh, in the city. Oh, okay. The two tours are full, but you can still pick up like a map. And then uh, you have like a tour around the city to go through Le Souk. But there are oh. also other places where you can bring your own stuff. Um, and there's, a, of course, a Facebook group for it, for zero waste shopping. Mm-hmm. And the amount of shops that actually allow you to do zero waste shopping has, has amazed me while I was in preparing Honingen? for this guide. Uh, in yeah. Groningen? Or? Yeah, yeah. Wow. There okay. was actually a zero waste tour here as well. But it's closed because it was t- a bit too early. It mm-hmm. was in, uh, I think, four years ago or something. Mm. Okay. But now you see it coming back. Nice, nice. That's, That's very good. Cool. Yeah. 
I also read that the University of Groningen mm -hmm. um, published like a downloadable map mm -hmm. with 60 sustainable hotspots in Groningen. So nice. shops, right. cafes. So that's also something to check out, I think, for, for yeah. everybody can be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, nice restaurants with nice plant-based options. Mm. My personal favorite is the herbivore. The herbivore. <laughs> um, it is located at the Gedempte Zuiden Diep. Ah, uh, yes. Across the Pate. Yeah. Oh, shit. The cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I know this place. Their yeah. food is amazing. And it's really oh. good. And um, in the Noel Plansoen, you have uh, Mahalo. No, it's now called different. Uh, I think it's Mahalo. Oh, yeah, Mahalo. Is that a cafe? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed. It's like... Um, like above the Nora Plansoon? Yeah. Yeah, no, shout out to Mahalo. They make great coffee. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's honestly, you go to the Nora Plansoon, you pick up the coffee, you have a walk around, and the staff mm. is always really friendly. Mm. And they're, they're sustainable as well, you're saying? Or? Yeah, yeah. They're, well, they're fully plant based. So ah, okay. That is oh, sustainable. That's but cool. uh, they also do a lot with their, um, like their cups are paper and yeah. you yeah. bring your own cup. Uh, that is cool. This kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Talking about footprint again, there's also an app for you to measure how big your footprint is. Mm. It's called For Good. We're also going to put the link that's in the description of the podcast, do. but that's super cool. And you can, there's plenty of others, like you can check out how sustainable your favorite brand is with the website Rank a Brand, yeah. for example. Do you know That's it? awesome. Yeah. Cool. How, how credible is Rank a Brand? I'm not sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Why? it's... Uh, no, just why are you uh, asking? Oh no, just because I'm always uh, always trying to be critical for every yeah. source of information. Yeah. Um, and I, I assume if it's a if it's a if it's a website that is being critical of others, then you got to be sure that the thing that is being critical is also critical in itself. Very sharp. Um, so I want to be sure that if I'm going to the website and they are being critical of other brands, yeah. then I'm getting the, the best information. Yeah. But I but it also makes me wonder, is that the only website that does sort of this sort of thing? Or is that the best website? Uh, there's many, many institutions that classify the sustainability of companies. Uh, there's the sustainability index I think it's just called and uh, there's other there's many certifications and mm -hmm. competitions to see which company is actually sustainable which isn't and they have ratings and stuff yeah 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 um, but it's always good to wonder what they actually do right behind yeah. the scenes to measure their impact definitely yeah, yeah. because within this space and the space that I'm working with as, within as well uh, greenwashing is a big thing right so you can put sorry what did you green? greenwashing what is greenwashing greenwashing is acting like you're sustainable but it, you're not actually so you're, you're just putting saying a lot of you are like value labeling sort of thing. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, so you're saying a lot of things about the products you're making that is maybe sustainable about them, but then at the end of the day, your company isn't really. Oh. And I think so that's also a big problem because if they you just use it for marketing that mm -hmm. they can raise their prices because they are so sustainable, that's well. Yeah, I know, I'm not sure if companies what? actually do this right, but I think many companies also don't realize what it entails. So they think that they're already on the right track, but they're not really. So this mm. is why regulation on this front is, is good. Uh, yeah. Because it helps these companies as well to actually know, okay, when am I actually sustainable and when am I yes. not? Yes. In some areas, in some industries, it's also difficult to, to determine whether they are really sustainable. I don't know if you watched the movie Sea Spiracy, mm. but <laughs> the, this movie kind of criticizes the... the, the um, yeah. dolphin safe tuna yeah. kind of mm. thing yeah. because and an MSC yeah because once fishers are out there you're, it's hard to control them right mm -hmm. so how are you really going to know if they are really dolphin safe yeah. Yeah. so there's some research you would have to do into this and this also re requires effort but I think it's definitely worth it yeah absolutely and when you see these kind of documentaries you are not trusting these kind of institutions anymore no, because it, it turns was, yeah. out that they are just also about certifying companies to have this label, right? Yeah. yeah. That's their income. Yeah. So then at the end of the day, it turns out that they actually try to label as much companies as they can without being too strict. And that and is not the point. No, no, that's not the point. Exactly. So as a consumer, you can be easily confused. Um, and therefore, it's nice if you actually have this, this view of, okay, am I just drawn to this because it's sustainable or is it actually? Yeah. Exactly. To have to write like resources to really see who is trustworthy yeah. and God, what that, label is. I think that's the biggest problem because to be honest, I don't want to have to think about this. No, exactly. I just want to be able to be sustainable without, I'll, I'll buy something and I'm like, I can be like, I'm sure yeah. this is going to harm anything, but I can't anymore. Yeah. It's almost like we're already, we're constantly having to feel guilty or being immoral just by going and buying food. Yeah. And that's terrible just because <laughs> a bunch of companies are lying to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think one remedy to this is just looking it up on the internet, doing your, your own research. There's also something you can do, right? For now, it's, it is an option. But as you say, you don't want to be busy with this all the time, right? Because yeah. it takes a lot, a lot of energy and time for yourself. Yeah. So it's also up to companies and regulation to m make this more easily Definitely. for uh, for the consumers. Definitely. Yeah, I can certainly hope and, that that's and this, for this institution here in the Netherlands is now actually checking, I think around 200 companies or something because they have been saying they are sustainable but they're checking their claims because it uh, it's a bit shady okay so now the the financial risk is also getting higher for companies oh to, wow and that's good because yeah, no, that they, awesome. they can't that's just awesome. toss out these 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 words and yeah because all these words are free to use right natural ecological or whatever yeah Only mm -hmm. biological or like uh yeah biological in dutch but yeah. that's protected <laughs> Um, but other words you can freely use. So. And people yeah. don't know about it, right? Yeah. No. They, so they see that they and they trust it yeah. and they buy it and in the end the yeah. it's for nothing. It's a natural product. So you, you <laughs> think, oh, that's that's great. It's great. Yeah. Gotta buy it. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, those are some great tips. How legal is it for uh, the say the government to just say, do not trust these other words, just trust this word that we have defined? Suppose, for instance, the only word where you know it's actually ecologically certified by the government by this institution is mm -hmm. uh, biologisch yeah. but other words don't count for it yeah. and then there's going to be like an advertisement or something that says only biologisch is actually ecological every other word is full of shit yeah that would be quite a good campaign I think yeah um, yeah that's your proposal right <laughs> no yeah I mean that's my proposal but uh, would the I don't know the would the government be able to do that sort of thing um, yeah, so with biological, that is uh, a protected word. Yeah, so yeah, say, yeah, yeah, I don't know the details about it, but it's protected. Yeah. And they could protect more words yeah. or they could uh, instruct us more about, hey, uh, be careful when you buy something and it's advertised this and this. But I think the, the first way to go is better to actually regulate it more. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we had some very interesting insights. Mm -hmm. And we will gather all of these apps, websites, yeah. tools to write it in a text so that everybody has access. And yeah. also, if you know any more apps that help you to be more sustainable, please write them to us in the comments so that we can also add them. And then we can try to all be sustainable together. Can I say one more thing before you yes. finish? Ooh, yeah. Yes. Because at the start, we talked about eco-anxiety for a while, right? Yeah. Um, this is something we shouldn't just push away. Um, we are now in a transitional phase where we don't really know what's happening. You know, we want to be more sustainable, but it's not possible to be more sustainable right away as a whole globe. Yeah. So it's also good to actually feel this pain and, and really realize, okay, this we are harming this planet. And um, uh, like you, you uh, when someone in your family passes away, you have a moment to, to mourn. And yeah. this mm. you also have to give towards this process don't try to push it away and only focus on i want to do it better but actually realize okay it is not nice and i feel these kind of emotions talk about it with your friends talk about it with people um because then you actually create space to yeah be more energetic and more empowered to to make a change yeah That's definitely push, push through the pain then you'll find your the way you'll be able to actually help yeah and feel the pain don't only push through but actually accept it accept yeah, that see. it's not yes, of great course. yeah and then you have more space then it's opens you up yeah is my experience then fruits can grow from it yes oh, exactly nice nice, nice. <laughs> that's ecological right there yeah i think that's a very that's very inspiring though thank and you. thank you both for being here we have some some little things for you thank you all that's right for thank you. you i have a i have a hard question is is you? this ecological yeah. That you would have to ask the we'll, we'll talk about that after. Oh, okay, okay. But it's Groningen Marketing who offered this to us. So this is very nice. nice. And I would say thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's some more episodes coming. Very interesting ones. And I would say bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you.